Okay, so one last thing we need to do is just double check because we've added a few more functionality to the rig. We've added the nice sine curves and different things. So we want to check that as we scale this up, all that works. And instantly, straight away, we can see scaling this up is making the antennas and the arms which, which we've just added they're now actually, you know, they're compressing which we only really want to happen when the arm increases but if you think about the connections, it's a set driven key as this distance increases it's going to switch on that blend chip so by scaling up the rig we are actually scaling up the distance dimension tool so in actual fact the distance between the wrist and the far, um, the arm has increased because the rig's been scaled up so that's switching on the blend chip and the same for these curves up here but we don't really want that to happen so and again it's going to double check the sign so the signs are working okay so it's just these stretch blend chips so I'll reset the rig back to one and if you remember when we did the squash and stretch for the arm, we did a little trick with the multiply divide node where we took the global scale and actually input that into the graph as well. So this scale actually controls the scale of the arms as well. So we can do the same with this. So I'm going to select the mesh, I'm going to bring the hyper shade. With the mesh selected, I'm going to take its blend shape, copy the name, paste it into select it and I'm just going to go graph input and output connections I'm going to get this big massive graph so don't worry about this we've got all the joints in here so there's quite a few joints on this skin um, so pretty much everything that's going to affect this blend shape so the blend shape's down here so I'm just going to drag this off to the side and all I'm looking for is the parts that are controlling this blend shape so if you remember for the arms it was the distance dimension tool so I can see two distance dimension tools here so I'm going to select them it's got a graph in the middle because it's a set driven key set driven key is keyframe data so it's basically this distance dimension tool is driving some keyframe data which drives the blend shape so I'm going to select them then we move them off to the right and then if we look up here we have the curve so if you remember the info the curve info edited edited the blend shape for that, for the antennas, so I'm going to move that down here and I'm just going to root around and I can see there's another curve in for here drag that over here and I'll select the rest of this graph and just go graph remove selected from graph do the same with these down here and hit F to frame up on these so I'm just going to arrange these into the graph again, so we've got the left antennas the right antennas at the top and the right arms at the side ok so you can see what's going on so we have the driver which is these distance dimensions and the curves for the antennas and they are just driving these graph nodes these nodes here and if we double click on them we can actually see in the attribute editor all it is is just a couple of keys which also means if we've got to render animation edits, graph editor it is just a, a bit of keyframe data and instead of time at the bottom you can see down here we've got the actual curve info the arc length so instead of having time along the bottom it's an actual attribute tribute so we're going to do the same what we did, we're going to select the global control graph add selected to graph because we want the global scale attribute to bypass this. So what I'm going to do is, if you think, if we increase the global scale by 2, what I want it to do is actually, you know, divide the length of these by 2. So that way we're working with the original length. So as we scale the rig up, it's going to, so if we scale the rig by 2, it's also going to scale these distance dimensions by 2 and these curves by 2. So we're getting double the amount so then if we actually take that, divide it by 2, we're getting back to the original amount so to do that multiply divide node 
I'm just going to duplicate one of these for each corner. So I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to set the operation to divide on each one of these multiply divides. And then again I'm going to take the global um, control input into these. I'm going to take the global scale and put it into the input 2x of each of these. So reload right, input 2x reload right, input 2x OK, so we've got the global scale attribute in there so now what we need to do instead of this curve going straight to this um, node over here which is the set driven key I'm going to input its arc length so I'm going to right click arc length and then left click input 1x so you can see here we're dividing the arc length by the size of the rig so if the rig has doubled up twice so if the rig you know increases by 2 it's twice the size it is going to make the actual curve twice the size. This is going to be about 18 point whatever. And then if we divide that by the global scale, which if it's been doubled, that's going to be 2. So we're halving it again back to the original value. So that way, no, ma no matter how big we make the scale of the rig, it's going to be you know dividing it by itself, bringing it back to the original value. So this graph here is going to use the same value for the arc length no matter how big or small the rig is. So do the same on these. So take the arc length and put 1x. On the distance tools we're going to be taking the distance putting that into the input 1x. And again we're using the distance tools for the arms. If you would prefer the sine wave Oops, put that in the wrong wrong x there. Distance input 1x. So again I'm using these distance tools for the sine curve for the arms. But if you do want the arms to, you know, get squashed, you know, get really thin as you use the sine wave, you could go ahead and use the same method as these curves up here, you know, create the curve, snap it to each joint, skin that curve to the ribbon but for this I'm just doing it so you can see if we don't have the ribbon spines you can use this normal method so if you don't use the ribbon spines for the arms for instance if you just used the driver joints you know the start double elbow and the wrist if you weren't interested in the ribbon this is the method you probably want to use using the distance dimension to drive the uh, rig okay so we've all this selected we've got these all dividing so now all I'm going to do is take the output x and put it into the input it, it's not visible there so I'm just going to take the output x and put it into the input and if you're unsure what to connect we're basically bypassing this connection here so I can see that it's taking the distance dimension shape and if you read the name it's going into the this node here the dot input so all we're doing is overriding that dot input so I'm going to drag and drop over, taking the output to the input. Do the same along here. Over, output x into the input, and the same here. Output x to the input. Okay, so now we can see we're bypassing the set driven key, and we're telling it to use the global scale as a proportion. So now as we scale this rig up we should be able to see hopefully. Yep, so we can see setting this to a value of 3, so actually I'll set this to a massive value, set it to 36. And we can see the arms are not squashing. And if we just look at the graph here, what I can see, so this is the right dimension over here. We can see that it's taken this massive value which is now the new distance between the start and end of the arm 
and it's dividing it by 36 which is going to give us the original length of the arm if this scale was set back to 1. So this means we can bypass the set driven key and keep scaling this up. So I'll set it back to 1. So you can see it's, it's scaled up by a massive amount and it's still not uh, screwing up. We can also scale this down. So putting the scale really low, we can see the arms are still working. And actually, just to check this, yep, we can see the squashing and stretching as normal. So, if I say squash and stretch, um, the arms start to bend, so there's no real squash. For these antennas up here, what we could do is do the same, add another blend shape, but the reverse. So, as these antennas squash, you could add like a big bulgy sort of um, blend shape in there. So as it comes down this actually bulges out but I'm quite happy with just keeping it at that okay so I want to go in here and we'll probably want to start renaming these so MD underscore this is the right underscore antenna antenna stretch global scale. This will be the left. This will be the left instead of antenna. This will be the arm. And this will be the right arm. Okay, so by keeping everything consistent, checking things as we go along, we're going to save ourselves a lot of time. So we can set things up, check it, global scale's not working, how can we improve that, use the methods we've used before by bypassing this, this graph, bypassing this connection, checking it again and it's working. And we'll just see. So again, going through that range of motion, everything's working again.